All right, hey there, Prox Gaming Crew, and this is Prox Fight here. We're back for some more of the Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. And if you didn't miss out there on the last one, well, we just went and head on over here to Glitzville, and we got ourselves entered on into our way of the Glitz Pit from Grubba. And now, for what Grubba has been winning and telling us about here in this said place, is that we have to go through the ranks, and uh, that is how we're gonna have to become champion and at least try to pick up with that said Crystal Star later on. And uh, currently, right now, we are here in the minor leagues. We just started off with one of the first of the different matches here but now we're gonna have to go through a couple more of these different set matches for right now and that is gonna have to be with the kp koopa so we are gonna have to bow out with the koopa bros out here for the time being now these guys are a unique enemy so you are allowed to go and tattle alongside within uh using uh, goombella uh i believe they don't really coincide with the actual koopas so they are somewhat of a unique type of way that you go and uh interact with them uh with the said tattle mode there and uh now however uh within this video for today uh we are going to have to head on over to where dazzle is going to be and that is where we're going to be able to use uh the said different star pieces and uh, there is going to be one said type of badge that i will be picking up but however i will not be using it for the remainder of this series because i want to make sure that i use everybody alongside uh within our team and uh, if you guys do know about this said badge i'll go and kind to just briefly explain about it uh well this said badge in particular the one that uh that basically goombella like doesn't really hardly get, get used anymore throughout the game and that is going to be known as the peekaboo badge and uh, basically what the peekaboo badge is is that it's a very helpful badge to at least show out every single type of hp that all the different enemies are going to have and even said bosses as well too um but the one thing that you don't really ever get, get to go and see is is that um is that while you have goombella here uh, she could go and give you all the unique type of dialogue and give you a whole bunch of descriptions about what the said uh enemies are all about and that's what i'm going to go and uh, keep on doing here for this said uh, series is to make sure that Goobella is going to be doing all for tattling and making sure that we get all the uh, information that we do need from these said guys here because you know back when I went and first played throughout my time of Paper Mario Thousand Year Door on the Nintendo GameCube uh, not from just doing uh, from my Let's Play channel uh, from what was going on but when I went and first played it uh, back when I first got the game on my GameCube uh, I hardly ever really went out of my way to even do anything tattle related because like once I got that peekaboo badge and once I was able to pick up with like at least a quite a bit of the said type of uh, star pieces that I didn't need Goombella never even got used like I used everybody else just except for Goombella just like Goombario in in uh, Paper Mario 64 but uh, however we went and taken care of that match we got the uh no use of flower points so that is pretty handy right there now there is going to be a certain situation that grubba will go and tell us next time and that is going to be for another up and coming battle at some point around over here i don't know if it's from the pokey battle or from the dry bones battle that we're going to be facing off with next uh but he will be telling us that uh, we can't use any items for the next turn and that we can't even use any type of uh hammer related attacks uh so the only type of thing that you can only go and do is well probably for that one is just going and just using coops if you ever do need to because then you have like the power shell and you could just go and just do whatever you need to do with that part there and um now there is going to be a said part at some point around over here within the minor league situation i don't know if i went and briefly talked about that here in this video or not yet uh but there is going to be a bandy andy which we have been seeing a little bit here and there well, throughout our time and uh, he will actually go and tell us about like all these different mysterious events that are occurring over here in glitzville and uh one type of uh mysterious event that you may probably want to go and actually learn a little bit about is the whole jolene and grubba situation because uh I know that since we are going to have to face off with Grubba at some point, uh, there is going to be a little mysterious event uh, type of dialogue that Bandy Andy will talk about. And we'll kind of give you somewhat of a foreshadowing into what Grubba's uh, type of body transformation, I guess, is just for a little bit. But yeah, so here we go. So this is the don't use item situation with the pokies here. Now, if you guys do see, there is one pokey that does have a life shroom. So technically, even if you want to go and uh, completely destroy him out, since we do have that power smash, it's not going to really go and uh, basically give him a game over right away. Because unfortunately, that life shroom is just going to heal him right all the way back up like it's no tomorrow. 
But yeah, so here is a regular Pokey. Uh, there will be another time at some point where we are going to be meeting up with the Poison Pokies. Those are going to be the Gloom Pokies. Uh, we won't be seeing them until like much into our way of what, yeah, somewhere around where like Chapter 6 is going to be uh, with the whole Excess Express situation that's going to be going on from there. Now, uh, if you are very lucky enough, you can actually swing back those uh, type of uh, Pokeballs right back to them, and uh, you can actually knock them down for a little bit, which uh, they do hit them pretty hard for it. And there we go. And just like that, uh, we went and destroyed all those uh, Pokies right there, and they're all finished. All righty. So now we're going to be able to just get our uh, money once again. And that is what, like seven coins right there. So pretty nice. And yes, and uh, even speaking about with the set coins, uh, every time that you go through the battles, uh, I believe they increase every time. So the more and more times that we go and do our battles and the more and more times that we get the wins that we do need, our actual coins are going to be going up pretty much high uh, within our way. And uh, we can actually save up a lot of money just from this, uh, from all these different tournament battles alone. So yeah, so this Bandy Andy guy has just went and kind of did some snooping around, and it seems like Jolie's already went and caught him once again. Yep, this guy is a magnet for trouble every time. Now, I believe this is, like, your only one opportunity to go and talk to him. I don't know if there's any other times they could go and meet up with Bandy Andy. Uh, I want to say again at some point. But if you want to go and read through all the different uh, mysterious events uh, before he actually goes and disappears, uh, you can go ahead and do so. All right, so now we got ourselves with our next type of battle here. I'm pretty sure this is going to be the one with the dry bones. Uh, this is a very easy battle uh, because, like, since we don't really have our way of using our hammers at all, well, we do have coops here, and we can just go right for the power shell and knock them out pretty much quickly because uh, I believe from before when we went and did some stuff over at the Hooktails Castle, we already know a little bit about that said uh, dry bones battle from here. Yep, the Bone Banging Rockers. I just love all their uh, type of unique uh, group names that are here. Got the KP Koopas, uh, the, 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 whatever, the Dead Bangers that are out here. So, yeah, so all of them are literally sitting at like one HP. So, all that we really need to do, just do a power shell, just make sure they have enough uh, star points to go ahead for this. And there you go. Or FP points, let's just say not star points, but. There we go. And just like that, we're all good. Yeah, and it seems like so far for right now, we're hardly ever going to get like any type of star points all that too much. Probably when we go through like maybe like the major league area, we'll probably be seeing a little bit more extra star points happening. Now, just be careful of one type of battle, though, because at some point we're going to have to face off with an actual set patrol Koopa. And uh, that one in particular, I think... I don't know if Grubba is going to be allowing us to use items or not, but it all depends on what the RNG is going to be for that said battle. But if you are lucky enough and if you can use items, I think a PAL block would actually do really nice good wonders for that patrol coop, and then you don't have to really worry about it. But he is like one of the, like one of the powerful of the different wrestling matches that we're going to have to go through. So it looks like somebody got injured. Well, that's just like any type of wrestling sport, you know? We've been seeing that happening quite a bit frequently throughout WWE. I don't know if you guys went and saw SummerSlam a little bit a while ago, and uh, Rhea Ripley literally popped her shoulder. And that was actually a true thing, because I'm pretty sure that did happen, kind of like what happened with Becky Lynch. Like, I know that Becky Lynch had to, like, go and pop her shoulder one time. I think that was, what, like, two WrestleManias ago? And then uh, all of a sudden, Rhea had the same type of event, and then she had to, like, smash her arm right into the announcer's desk to pop it back in place. And then not only that, but then she had to do it for a second time. And then she had to smash her shoulder into the, uh, into the actual ring post, too. But, um... Uh... Let's go and read through the one that we do need, and that's Grubba and Jolene. Uh, you can read through all of them if you want to. Uh, there is a man-eating toilet, and that man-eating toilet is speaking about that weird type of yellow block that is in the uh, 
in the minor league room because I believe it's actually a split between, I think, both the major league room and the minor league room, I think, between each other. And you can actually head through that type of uh, toilet there because it is like somewhat of like a warp pipe. The missing ones. Um, that's also like another thing that you could probably go and read up as well, too, because there has been a lot of missing wrestlers so far. And I think that all has to do to be doing with something out, out here with Grubba, but. Right now, let's just go ahead and head all the way over here towards back to the actual uh, Merlin once again for the Shy Sprites. Now, this one in particular, we are going to have to go and do a little bit of some upgrade in here. And this one is going to be a course for Flurry so that we can at least be able to get the brand new move, which I think that is that lip lock move, right? want to make sure that we at least get that out of the way. And we're going to skip past through all of this just so you guys don't have to see the cutscene again. So at least we'll be able to skip past all of those. Now, um, I think at some point we are going to have to head back over here to Merlin and do a lot of that power bouncing of the ground pounding move there. Because at some point uh, there is going to be like an arrow or something or some sort of random thing that's going to probably pop up there. And that will give us like the next type of uh, upgrade that we do need or something. Or like one of those orbs. But I could be thinking about that in more so a Paper Mario 64, but... Yeah, so here's Dazzle. Uh, I know that we haven't really hardly ever really, really got to go and see Dazzle that too much. Uh, we could have went and seen him at the very beginning of the game, but I decided to wait until we got like enough star point, uh, well, enough of the star pieces that we actually do have. Um, but yeah, uh, these are like very special badges, and I believe once you go and buy them, uh, you can't buy them again. Uh, so you do have like the item hog, the heart finder. Uh, there's some pretty nice good type of badges here. I think the item hog is like the main one that I always like to go and use more often. Uh, just so that we can have a lot more different items that we go and use and that will help us out quite a bit uh, We do have the peekaboo badge, which I will go and buy but I'm not gonna ever use it uh, But it is something there that we can go and use uh, if we ever do need it uh, But we do have quick change uh, Which uh, that's okay. I guess quick change like is okay. I, well for the said battling though uh, you got the uh, Power Plus badge, always great to have. Uh, it gives you an extra increase of your attack damage if you ever need that. But it eats up a lot of badge points, though. Uh, so we got that. Uh, we got uh, the Power Plus. Uh, we could at least go for one of those if we do need it. But we got to start with the Item Hog. So yeah, I think we are going to go for that power plus because I don't think we ever really went and found one yet, but this one could be added right here to it. Nice. And is there anything else that we need to go and grab? Ah, yes, the pretty lucky badge. The main one that I have been always wanting to go and grab as well. Because I see that one in the distance and I think that's going to be the one that we're going to be choosing. Much better than a close call badge. But anyways, I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. And of course, peace.